Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, Y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend. Can I say it again? Can I say it a million times? I hope you guys are getting outside, getting some fresh air, going for a walk, drinking your water. Is everybody drinking their water? Hmm? Taking your vitamin C? Taking care of yourself? Your immune system? Keeping it healthy. We're in very, very unprecedented times right now, you guys. Take care of yourself, please. Take care of your children. Take care of your family. Okay, I'm done. All right, so we're going to be talking about the case of Nicole Johnson. Have y'all heard about this? This is a story of the 33-year-old woman that got pulled over in Baltimore in July, July 28th of 2021. You guys were sending me this brief synopsis of what happened on social media quite a bit and I'm just now getting around to being able to talk about it. So before I get into it though, I did want to say that in this story, I think that it really is going to highlight mental health because in this case, um, you just cannot look at a situation like this and in my personal opinion and think that there is not a very serious mental health element to this. And I think we need to be talking about it more. We need to be talking about it with our families, our friends. So let's just start at the beginning. On a Wednesday at around 11 p.m. on July 28th of 2021, an officer saw a car speeding down a road in Baltimore. Now the cop turned on his lights and pulled the car over just for like a routine traffic stop for speeding which they say that a routine traffic stops or speeding and stuff like that can be some of the most dangerous for you know officers because you never know what you're going to get. Nevertheless, the cop walked up to the window and it was a young 33-year-old woman named Nicole Johnson driving the car. When he asked her for her driver's license, she did not have a driver's license. When he ran the tag, which was a paper tag, it was a fake tag. It was not legitimate. It was not for that car. The more that the officer continued to dig, the car was not registered. It did not have any insurance. It had a fake tag and the driver, Nicole, didn't have a driver's license. Now this cop, who was obviously in a wonderful mood or was just like a very understanding officer decided that he was going to let her go, but he was going to tow the car. He could not let her just drive off with this car. I mean, it's uninsured, unregistered, no tag, fake tag, and no driver's license. So he told Nicole that he was going to tow the car, but that she needed to step out of it and gather up all of her belongings that she wanted to keep before it was towed. When he told her this, this is when Nicole started making some like comments that was disturbing to the officer and would probably be to anybody, but especially this officer. And Nicole said, it don't matter. I won't be here in five days. Y'all gonna see me on the news making my big debut. The officer obviously disturbed by those comments. Like, okay, what is she talking about? We're gonna see her on the news. She's gonna make her big debut, you know does not sound good. Most people would be like, thank you. Thank you so much for letting me go. Let me call my friends. Like, oh my gosh, I don't, you know, but she was like, it don't matter anyways. Y'all gonna see me on the news. I'm gonna make my big debut. Okay. As Nicole opened the trunk of the car, this is when the officer said he smelled something. And what he smelled was a very distinct smell, something that any officer, police investigator, or anybody that is smelled this smell says that they always recognize and that is the smell of decomposing flesh or body. He said at this time he smelt this faint smell and he was on alert but he was watching Nicole as she was removing the stuff from the trunk. 
She um, removed first a big trash bag, a big black trash bag, and set it to the side. And then after that, she grabbed a tote. The officer then asked Nicole to open the trash bag. And this is when she kind of started trying to fast talk him, didn't really want to open it. And he was persistent, probably like, no, you better open that bag right now. I don't know what he said, but obviously at this point, he was probably like, okay, <laughs> something ain't right here. When she opened the bag, this is when the officer saw maggots in the, black in the black trash bag. When she opened the bag and he saw the maggots, he was hit with the smell of death. And Nicole started trying to tell the officer that he was living out of her car and that it was just old blankets in there and there was just old trash and blankets and stuff and he instructed her to open the suitcase because there was an actual suitcase inside of this trash bag where the maggots were. And when she tried to fast talk him, he was persistent. He said whatever he said. He commanded her to open the suitcase. And when she opened the suitcase, this is when the officer saw the decomposing body of a seven-year-old little girl. She tried to run at this point, and it said that she was arrested. I can only imagine what that looked like. Probably tackled her down, you know, whatever. Arrested her, okay? And when he took her under, when he put her under arrest, and they took the duffel bag that the tote bag or duffel bag that she took out of the trunk, as well as that bag that had the maggots and the suitcase in it. It was taken off to autopsy and the seven year old little girl's body that was in there was her niece. And they said that the autopsy revealed that she was only 18 pounds when she passed away. So a seven year old little girl weighed 18 pounds. Do you realize how small that is? Do you, I mean like, a bag of dog food that we buy from Walmart for our little tiny dogs weighs more than that. You know, my, my little small dog weighs 10 pounds. This was a seven year old little girl. I use a 25 pound dumbbell for some of my workouts at the gym, 25 pounds. And this was a seven year old little girl, 18 pounds, tiny. In the duffel bag, the other bag, they found the decomposing body of her nephew, who was the five-year-old little brother of the seven-year-old little girl's body that was found. Now, when they got Nicole down to the police station and they began to interview her is what the article said. I can only imagine. They were probably interrogating her. At first, she started to try to say she didn't know who the kids' bodies were, that, you know, that she didn't know why they were in the trunk of that car. She had just got, you know, how people do every other excuse in the book. But as they pressed her, that is when Nicole started to reveal what she said happened. Now, I guess we will never really know, but her story was that in she had raised these kids for a few years, that they were her sister's kids. So this was her niece and nephew. And that she said her sister was not able to take care of them. Never said why, but she ended up in a place in her life where she didn't feel like she could take care of the kids. And so Nicole, the aunt, took the kids in. She said that in May of 2020, which was over a year after this time where she got pulled over and the bodies were found, is when the little girl passed away. She said that they were at this hotel room that they had been living in or staying in and that the little girl was up late and would not listen. She was misbehaving and Nicole said that the little girl was stealing things. I don't know how that's possible, how a little seven-year-old little girl that's living with you in a house is stealing things. What was she stealing? Food, maybe, at 18 pounds? But she was stealing things and that she hit this little girl in the head and she fell down and she hit her again and that she passed away. She said at this time that the little five-year-old little boy was actually sleeping. She said that she took her body, put it in that suitcase, and put it in the trunk of the car. According to Nicole, the little five-year-old boy passed away a few months prior to her being pulled over. So she said he was, had passed away just a few months, months ago. She said what happened to him was that they were riding in the car and he was sitting in the back seat and he went to sleep and he just didn't wake up. That's what she said. Autopsy revealed that he had some sort of cut on his leg and she said she didn't know where the cut came from and they really 
don't know or didn't release at this point how he passed away. If he malnourished, he was starved, po- like they don't, they haven't released how. But nevertheless, she took his five-year-old body, put it in that duffel bag or that tote bag, and said then she wanted to put him next to his sister so they could be together. So from there, at this point, when she got pulled over, she had been driving around with her seven-year-old niece's body decomposing in that trunk for over a year, okay? And that little boy for a few months. She has been arrested. She has no bond. And she's been arrested for child abuse that resulted in death and some other charges. The mother has come forward since then. She's absolutely devastated. She said that she was trying to get her kids back, but she could not find them. I don't know what her mother, these children's mother went through. I don't know if, I mean, your mind can imagine why she couldn't take care of her kids, right? But what I will say is that she probably gave her children to her sister, believing wholeheartedly that they would be safe, right? That for whatever reason, she did not think that they were safe with her, but that they would be safe with her sister. And how devastating. And I have so many questions. Is it mental illness with the sister? Definitely, in my opinion, got to be mental illness with Nicole Johnson. You don't drive around with in this situation for any amount of time, for a second, much less a year, and go on about your life and not be unwell, okay? Much less, and this is this may seem so minute, but this bothered me. When I saw this picture of her mugshot, and I saw, obviously, the stare. You know, you're arrested for this. The stare, I don't know if it's substances. I, I don't know if it's substances and mental illness, because sometimes if you have any kind of mental illness, sometimes people have mental illness, like schizophrenia that runs in their family, and it gets triggered with substance abuse. And I don't know. I'm just questioning how a person can do this, right? But in this stare for what she's being arrested for is unsettling, but also the fact that she has her hair done. And I know that that may seem petty, but I'm thinking like she either drove to a salon somewhere and got her hair done with these babies back there. While editing this video, I actually came across some more information. It said that the day before Nicole Johnson was arrested, she visited a woman in Rosedale to get her hair redone. The woman, who was 25 years old, said that she's been doing Nicole's hair monthly for nearly a year. The two usually swapped life advice and discussed weekend plans. Sometimes the girl that does the hair would even talk about her kids. Nicole told her that she had two kids, a son and a daughter, and then she also had nieces and nephews. So now I'm really confused. So you mean to tell me this chick, Nicole, or this woman, has been driving around with these babies where they were and going and getting her hair done every single month and talking about weekend plans? Now I'm really, really, really confused. I need to know what y'all think. I, 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 I don't know. I'm just, I'm, it's disturbing. I know one thing though, when this seven-year-old little girl was walking around 18 pounds, nobody saw her and thought she looks malnourished. Maybe we should call somebody like 18 pounds. That is so tiny. Somebody had to realize that like, I mean, there's one thing when you have children that are very, you know, their genetics are for them to be thin and they don't, they don't, they just don't gain a lot of fat. That's one thing, but 18 pounds at seven years old Oh my gosh. So, so, so sad. And more than anything, I hope the family heals. There was a GoFundMe, but um, they ended up closing the GoFundMe because there was a donor that decided that they were going to pay for everything that the family needed. So there is no GoFundMe. So just send your guys, so send your prayers to the family because I just can't imagine what they're going through. So, oh, have y'all heard about this? How devastating. Again, you guys, if you see something, report it. Please, these kids cannot speak for themselves. As always, my loves, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.